What's good, Detroit Sports Nation? I am Eric Vincent, your host here at the DSN News Desk. Back again to chop it up with you, the best fan base in the world. I appreciate your time and support. And over the past couple of weeks, we've been talking about our frustrations with what we've seen for the Detroit Pistons over these past few games. After tonight's loss to the Atlanta Hawks, still a little sour taste in your mouth, but I think we should be able to take a lot of positives away from this game. I think we should be able to sleep a little bit easier tonight as we have been over these past few games that we've been watching with the Pistons. So let's go over what we saw. Uh, 118-113 was the final score tonight against the Atlanta Hawks. The Pistons debuted their brand new statement jerseys, the All Blacks, with a little bit of the red and blue trim and kind of the L.A. Clipper-like styling to them with the lettering. A lot of people are kind of hating on them. I don't think they're that bad. I think they're pretty cool. Um, I'd like that they're doing something different. They've had the traditional red, white, and blue look for all this time, and I like that they're stepping out and trying different things. I like what the jerseys look like on the court. And I liked a little bit of what I saw on the court. I like a lot of bit of what I saw on the court tonight. Again, we've talked about how unwatchable the last few games have been. Coming into the season, we predicted and kind of came into the assumption that the Pistons were going to lose a lot of games. But they were still going to look entertaining while doing it. They were still going to be, as they tried to, you know, prop us up and tell us before the season started, they wanted to compete. They wanted to be competitive no matter who was on their schedule. They wanted to make sure that they put their best foot forward every game. And even if it comes in a loss, you at least want to see that. And I think this is one of those games that you can take your hat off and respect the effort that the Pistons gave, even though it wasn't perfect. Uh, They were without Jaden Ivey, who had a non-COVID illness that he was dealing with. Uh, Wasn't even on the bench, wasn't in the arena. Uh, was at home, so hopefully he's okay. Well, wishes to him. Hopefully we get a timetable on his return soon. Be sure to stay tuned in with us at DetroitSportsStation.com. We'll have an update for you as soon as possible. Um, but outside of that, man, I'm okay with a lot of what I saw tonight, especially with a lot of the issues that we talked about in the last video, one of which was Kay Cunningham and his scoring issues that he was having, his efficiency issues. That got wiped away completely today after tonight's game. Cade with, I think, his best game of the season, putting up 26 points, 8 rebounds, 6 assists. Did have 7 turnovers that were kind of sloppy. A lot of them were more so towards the second half as well. But the first half revealed a lot of what we talked about and a lot of what we wanted to see in order to see a progression in Cade's game. He didn't shoot... I mean, he didn't shoot horribly inefficient. He shot 11 to 25, but he was really getting it going and keeping the Pistons in a very comfortable lead throughout the first half of the game where he put up 22 points in the first half. K was on a roll. He was really getting to the rim very well. He was feeling it a lot better with his mid-range shot. I think he knocked down um, one three-pointer, one of three from behind the long line, three of four from the free throw line, even though he was playing through contact the entire game, but could not get the adequate number of calls that he deserves, which clearly seems like it's going to be another long season issue with the referees. Because for whatever reason, you can send Trey Young to the free throw line 17 times where he's literally flopping and acting. But Cade, who legitimately does not flop, is driving through contact, creating contact, dealing getting smacked in the head on layups, and he can only get to the line four times in a game. I've never seen this treatment for a number one overall pick. It's absolutely insane, especially considering the NBA where floppers are the ones getting the respect, and they're the ones that are getting sent to the line. The James Harden, the Trey Youngs, like these guys flop an immense amount, and they're constantly getting sent to the free throw line and getting this respect. Trey Young wasn't even great today. I wasn't impressed with Trey Young. He shot 9-21. I know he had 35 points. He shot 1-7 from the three-point line. But he got to the free throw line 17 times and hit 16 of them. Like, it's just ridiculous, bro. I, I'm so disgusted and annoyed with the Detroit Pistons referees, man. Like, boy, I, I asked this on Twitter. Follow me, you know what I'm talking about. I literally asked the people on my following, who's worse, the Lions referees or the Pistons referees? Who's worse in these games, NFL refs with the Lions or NBA refs with the Detroit Pistons? Tell me in the comments section. Let me know what you're thinking. But back to the game, man. I'm okay. I'm happy with what I saw from Cade. I liked how aggressive he was. I liked how assertive he was. And you could tell without a Jaden Ivey when they were shorthanded and coming off of some ugly losses, 
Cade was clearly in a different mindset where he was ready to be aggressive and keep his team in this game by any means necessary. I love the way he was playing. Love how in control he looked. Um, and I love the assistance he was getting. Bojan Bogdanovich was hitting a lot of shots. Another fantastic game from him. 33 points, 12 of 21 shooting, 6 of 12 from 3. Oh, Bogey has been fantastic, man. Could you imagine seeing without Bojan Bogdanovich right now? This, again, the, we always talk about what a young veteran team needs. And you need veteran team, or sorry, a young, not young veteran team, but a young budding team. And you need veterans like a Bojan to help steer them when they're falling short, when they're, you know, not producing and runs are happening from their opponents. You need veterans like him that can knock down shots and settle things down when they're getting, you know, when they're losing their momentum throughout the game. He's done a fantastic job of keeping them through. And it was a lot of that throughout the fourth quarter when the Pistons were losing the lead. They were relying a lot on Bojan's ability to shoot from distance to keep them in the game and keep them efficient. And I've been super uh, pleased with what he's been doing. Again, I don't know if he's going to be traded by the deadline. I don't know what the Pistons' plan is for Bojan going forward, but he has been an absolute godsend for this team. He's been a perfect fit. Whatever they decide to do, I'm going to be with it. But, again, I'm super happy with this acquisition by Troy Weaver. Um, looking at some other things in the game, I'm <sighs> – look, we saw some good things from some people. And there's some things in this game that are still frustrating me. Again, it's still early, and I'm not saying these things won't be corrected down the line. We give the Pistons credit when they do well, even if it's just after one game. We were all hype after opening day. Last season when they were playing good, we were hyping them up. We were happy with what we were watching. So it's only fair that we criticize when it's appropriate as well. And we're taking it, again, from a standpoint of maybe it can get better. I'm not saying this is what's going to continue. Maybe it will. Maybe it won't. I'm not sure. We're just speaking of what we've seen so far. And there's some things that are still just driving me crazy about this team. Beef Stew is... A little more aggressive today in terms of his screen setting. A lot of you talked about it in the comment section from the last game. Beef Stew wasn't setting any kind of contact with the screens he was making. And you saw how that was affecting Kay Cunningham. He was trying to do dribble handoffs and pick and roll sets with Beef Stew. And his guy would just double him and swat his shot and pay him no attention whatsoever. Now, there was a little change in that because Beef Stew was setting higher screens and harder screens. When I mean higher, I mean they're coming to screen closer towards the half-court line and further away from the three-point line where the defender that's beef stewed, he's a bit on an island, and he's forced to make a choice instead of, you know, just sitting and doubling on Cade. He's in a space where now he has to defend in open space and take on Cade Cunningham. So I like what they were able to do with that, and I like the opportunity that it created for Cade. You saw him get a little bit more comfortable with his mid-range shot because of that. I really enjoyed that development. Outside of that, man, I'm still on the standpoint of bringing Beef Stew off the bench. I think at this point, again, I'm, I'm going to keep hammering this point, though, until Jalen Durant is a starter. I think the Pistons' best starting lineup at this point is Cade Cunningham, Jaden Ivey, Sadiq Bey, who we'll talk about in a second, Bojan, and then Jalen Dern. I just think they have the best balance at that point. Bojan is your most proven shooter. Jalen Dern has the highest upside, and he seems to be getting better and better as a defender, and even when he's not even being utilized properly offensively because he's not getting a whole lot of lobs, he's not getting a whole lot of extra opportunities, but he's creating them for himself and for the team by grabbing offensive rebounds, tipping the ball out away from the taller defenders, and being able to limit the op offensive rebound opportunities that the defenders are getting. Because we saw that kill them in the fourth quarter when DeJounte Murray would miss a shot or Trey Young would miss a shot, and then Clint Capella would just tip it back to the perimeter, and then they would have another opportunity to shoot again. That has to be limited, and you can't do that with the lack of size that they have. You saw that as soon as Beef Stew came back in the game. Another mistake that they made, I believe, was taking Killian out. I don't think Killian played a fantastic game, but this is a game that you needed defense. We've seen Killian throughout his career, especially going back to last year. Killian locks up on Trey Young very, very well. He's very good defensively on Trey Young, and you took him out to put in Corey Joseph, who didn't do a damn thing. Corey Joseph scored two points, did make a field goal, made two free throws. Corey Joseph was horrible. He played 31 minutes. I understand why he played a lot because you didn't have Jay Nivey, but you only played Killian for 15 minutes. 
And in a game where Cade had it going, Sadiq was somewhat decent. We're going to talk about Sadiq in a minute. And you had other offensive um, consistency going within the team. You didn't need to rely on having Corey Joseph. You needed to play Killian more than 15 minutes in this game. And apparently, someone tweeted it out. He was visibly upset with his arms folded on the sideline, not happy that he was not on the court. And I have a hard time arguing against that. If you were the difference maker and you've had success against a guy like a Trey Young, if you have the stature and the frame to de- to guard a DeJounte Murray, I totally understand his frustration. I'll feel the exact same way. So hopefully they're able to shake that up a little bit. Now, Sadiq Bey. <laughs> Sadiq Bey is so confusing, man. Sadiq Bey is one of the biggest wild cards, one of the biggest enigmas I've ever seen because we see the potential with him and we see how valuable he can be to this team. He, to me, seems to be taking himself out of his own opportunities to be productive for this team. Sadiq had a good shooting day. His numbers in the box score look fine. 17 points, 6 of 11 from the field, 2 of 4. Uh, I didn't love the 3 of 6 on the free throw line. You're supposed to be... A knockdown shooter. You're supposed to be one of the best shooters on this roster. I don't love him shooting 50% from the free throw line. I also don't love Sadiq Bey getting wide open looks in the corner from Kay Cunningham. And instead of just shooting that shot, you dribble or step out of bounds. And then you turn the ball over. Or you try to isolate and you end up traveling and turning the ball over. Or you isolate and you hold the ball for what, 8, 9, 10 seconds, try to dribble, try to isolate, and then you just chuck some stuff up and hope you get a call. It's frustrating watching Sadiq Bay sometimes, man. Sadiq is at his best when he is in a when he's making quick decisions. When he's going to the rim immediately, or if he's just shooting right away. Again, Sadiq has a quick trigger on his shot. He doesn't need a lot of space because he gets it off his hand quick. But every time he holds the ball and tries to isolate like Kawhi Leonard, he is absolutely crushing offensive possessions for this team. That's not his game, man. When he's holding and he's thinking and he's being trying to be methodical, it's slowing them down and it's taking this team out of rhythm. He's becoming a ball stopper the way he's playing. And that's not his game, man. It's not his game at all. Sadiq has to be able to hone in on the fact that his best strength has been his three-point shooting. Perfect that. Perfect that. Find perfect spots that you can get comfortable with in roaming and rolling with Kay Cunningham and Jaden Ivey, passing you the ball and finding you open in the corner, at the top of the key, at the top of the wing, when you play pick-and-roll basketball where Beef Stew is setting screens where you can actually get open and draw attention away from the defenders that are guarding you, that's when he gets those open looks, and we saw that today. We saw Beef Stew, Jalen Durant, we saw the big setting legitimate screens. For a while, they were targeting Trey Young, too, which I really liked, but they went away from that. They went away from that, and I thought that was a problem. But from what you're looking for and what you need for Sadiq Bey, is to be one of those reliable knockdown shooters. He has to be that spacer, especially when there's staggering time for him to also become one of those second unit scorers as well. He has to perfect his ability to be a catch and shoot player because that is what made him stand out as a rookie. At this point, I want to say he's, I'm not going to say he's regressing, but he's, I don't like that he's trying to add on too much without solidifying his ability to be a knockdown shooter. He's still up and down and very inconsistent with his jump shot and his three-point shot. He doesn't really have much of a mid-range game. I want to see him perfect the work on that. You don't need three ISO players on the floor at the same time. We're not the Brooklyn Nets with James Harden, Kyrie, and KD. You don't need that. That's not what you want on this team. You want your creators to be creators. Jay Ivey shown his ability to pass. We know Kade is a good passer. Catch the ball. Shoot the ball. Make a quick decision immediately. Because I'm telling you, man, it's early, and I know I'm speaking with just emotion right now. So you kill me in the comment section, I understand why. But to me, I'm not going to lie to you guys. I'm getting close to a point where I'd rather see Isaiah Livers in the starting lineup. Like, I'm I'm being real serious about that. Isaiah had a really good day defensively. He really shot well. 12 points, 4-7, 4 from 6 from the 3. And he's quick with the ball. Isaiah is getting rid of the ball fast. He's getting shots up quickly. He's not... 
he's not being a stopper. He's making sure the ball is moving to keep the defense on their heels. The intelligence of Isaiah Livers is always on high display, and I think he could make a huge imprint on this starting lineup if he ever had to start. If somebody got hurt and you had to start Isaiah Livers in that position at the three, the four, if you somehow slid him to the two, whatever you were playing him at, I think he'd be a seamless fit because he works that well with his skill set. I want to see Sadiq take some traits off of that game, being able to move the ball fast, making quick snap decisions instead of being a ball stopper. That is hurting this team. It's hurting his production, and I think it's not going to help them in the long run. But again, it's early. We'll see how it develops. They have time to figure it out. I'm not doubting him. I'm not saying trade Sadiq. I'm not saying anything crazy like that. I promise you. But I do want to see some improvement from what we've seen with this team. Next game on Friday, again against the Atlanta Hawks, and I believe this is the first time we're going to see the return of the Teal jerseys, if I'm not mistaken. So I'm super, super excited to check that game out. Make sure you tap back in with us here, right here on our YouTube channel here at Detroit Station. Subscribe to the channel. Make sure you like the video. And again, talk to me in the comment section. I would love to hear how you felt about this game. For me, I'm going to be able to sleep a lot easier tonight knowing how they play tonight. If you feel the same way, talk to me let me know. If you're feeling the opposite, if you say, you know what, no, I'm tired of them coming up close and I want to see them be able to win these kind of games, talk to me and tell me why. Tell me why what you think they need to do to close these kind of games out. Talk to me in the comment section. I'd love to hear your feedback. And again, we're closing in. We're this close to getting to 5,000 subscribers. If you're new to the channel, click the subscribe button. Stay locked in with us so we can reach that milestone and keep this content coming your way here at Detroit Sports Nation. Make sure you follow our social media channels as well. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, all of the above. Search and follow Detroit Sports Nation. And follow me as well at I am Eric Vincent. And I'll be sure to check back in with you right here with another update from the DSN News Desk. Peace.